What's going on guys? So this is a quick little video with DaVinci Resolve and the iPad Pros. I ran into an issue. This is an M2 iPad Pro and this is the M4 iPad Pro. And we're going to get into DaVinci Resolve and I'm going to explain something because there's not a lot on DaVinci Resolve. Even Blackmagic does not really add a lot of support. I called them and both techs I spoke with basically said it's a very lightly supported product because it's a newer product and I think that's kind of lame but regardless what I wanted to do I had a two terabyte iPad Pro M2 with a ton of stuff on there probably a terabyte of stuff a bunch of different projects so I had a lot of projects even more than you see here and I wanted to make sure all these projects carried over to the new M4 iPad in case I needed to get back to them or work on them or re-edit anything and what I did, which I shouldn't have done in theory, is take everything in my camera roll and I backed it up to my iMac by downloading it through Image Capture, which is an app on the computer with the um, Mac OS. So Image Capture, I downloaded everything and I had it delete off my iPad, which I probably shouldn't have done. And I thought I was kind of doomed and I couldn't figure out a workaround. People were saying a lot of different things on the videos and what the black magic techs were saying is that because when I back this thing up and then I restored the M4 to that backup they were basically saying since the media never existed on this iPad it never had a chance to communicate with it that it wasn't populating the projects with the media and it was showing you know offline media and I thought that was the final kind of thing and it actually isn't there's a workaround so what I did is I have this SSD drive and I went and I was kind of having some time to decompress and think this through and I just wanted to play around and what I did is go into files so right here files and then I went right here on my iPad and I went into DaVinci Resolve and I basically took everything, I long pressed this with the pencil, and I went ahead and moved each one of these folders to this external SSD drive that was mounted onto my M2. And then what I did is also I took one of these, each project I can go ahead and long press and I had export project. So then I exported the project and then I went over here into the little project area and I hit import. And when you hit import, you search for the file. Say, for example, here, I'll put this in so you can see. Do, do, do. Can't do both. I don't have this thing on a tripod right now. So right now, as you see, it's going to mount the Samsung drive, the T7, and this DRP, DaVinci Resolve project file, you select whatever one it is, and that's how you import it. And then when you go into the actual project, it may show missing media. And there's gonna be a link button here that you go ahead and press, and then you search, basically just search the drive, and you just go to the root directory of the drive. So I can literally just make sure I search T7, so click there, and I hit like connect, and it basically will scan all the folders and populate the media. So the media apparently is in one of these folders. I'm not sure exactly, it says proxy media, but I did not have to have the original files. Somehow they're in here, and it was able to populate, as I said, all these projects. So it's kind of confusing. There's not a lot of support on it, let me see if I can actually do one. Hold on one second. I'll show you. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this drive to the old iPad. Maybe I can do, let me see what I don't have. So I don't have this solo tree, not because I really need it, but I'll long press this and I'm going to go ahead and hit export. I'm going to select the main directory of the external, hit save, and voila, it saved it, right? 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug this guy into the M4. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. Boom. I'm gonna look for the solo tree DRP file. It's gonna import the project. And now if I double click, you're gonna see media offline. So media is offline. Let me see what I can do if I select that. Where is it? Um, media offline. There should be a little sync button somewhere. Oh, here it is. Maybe, no, not sync. Media, okay, you gotta go into media. And then there's this little button, that little red button to relink the footage. So it says two missing clips. So I'm gonna locate, hit locate. And because I put all those files that were here in that DaVinci Resolve, I remember I moved them to the SSD drive. So now they're on the SSD drive connected to this. So I'm just, connect, I'm just sourcing out the T7 hard drive. I'm not going into any folder and it's gonna scan every one of them and voila, relink them. And now we have without having the original footage on here ever, like Blackmagic Support said, it's gonna go ahead and play perfectly. So kind of confusing, and again, there's not a lot on this as far as where everything lies. I was really confused because I thought when I was gonna go ahead and restore this M4 iPad Pro, it was just gonna carry over the projects and all of it would have worked perfectly but it didn't, it carried over the project files, but it didn't actually load the media. It was showing that it was offline. So do what I said. Again, go into your files, go into on my iPad, go into DaVinci Resolve, and go ahead and move each one of these folders to an external SSD drive, and then you should be good to go doing what I said by exporting the projects, and then importing here, and then searching and relinking the media with that button, so mind you, I have the media selected. That relink will be red and just connect that and source it to the SSD and it will populate everything and good to go. And just so you guys know, I'll do a little video on the M2 and the M4 iPad Pro. These are both identical 13 inch, 12.9, two terabyte capacity, Wi-Fi only, space gray. I would say right off the bat so far, what I notice is the display seems to be clearer and brighter. It's a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter, which believe it or not is kind of appreciated, even though it's not that big of a deal. I know like Marque Brown or whatever his name is and people like that are saying they never really asked for a lighter, thinner iPad. And I get that, but actually it is nice to have a little bit lighter iPad Pro. So. Display, clarity and brightness is one thing. The little thinner lighter is much appreciated. And other than that, really not too much of a difference. I mean, if you're not really in the need, I would save your money. Also, the camera is now in the middle. So when you're going ahead and using this thing for FaceTiming or doing any kind of calls, it's nice so you don't have to be looking awkwardly off to one side like you're always just super not cool. I don't know. It sucks. So the camera is on this side meant for portrait mode. And I don't even know why, because this thing doesn't even really, the smart folios don't really even support the portrait mode. So anyway, little things like that. I'll do a more in-depth video on the differences between the M4 and the M2, but right off the bat, lighter, thinner, brighter, clearer screen, camera relocation, the smart folio case is actually nicer because you can reposition it in different ways. And yeah, that's about it. But hope this helps someone, guys, because it really stunk for me because there was really very limited resources on this for the iPad Pro. So that's it.